Now our discussion topic is card auto leveler. So, what is auto leveler? We have already discussed the auto leveler in the context of draw frame. Today we are going to discuss auto leveler for carding machines. Card auto levelers are of three types long term auto leveler, medium term auto leveler and short term auto levelers. Auto levelers are going to automatically level the thickness variation or mass per unit depth variation in the sliver that is the purpose that is it will automatically even out the mass variation in slivers that we are producing. First, we will discuss long term card auto leveler. Long term basically means that it will be only taking care of the mass variation over very long length of the sliver. That is why it is known as long term auto levelers. The working principle is closed loop control. We have already discussed there are two types of control system that we have open loop control system or we can have closed loop control system. So, in the case of long term card auto leveler the working principle is closed loop control system. The diagram is given on the right hand side and if we focus on the diagram, we will see that there is a detection point for detecting the mass variation in sliver and there must be a control point also. So, detection point is a trumpet placed just beside the calendar unit. We can see it here. there is a trumpet and that is the detection point or there is the sensor and the control point is the feed point to the machine. So, it is at the it is closer to the liquor in that we have. So, feed point is the control point for us and the detection point is the trumpet placed just before the calendar rollers. How does it work? The signals corresponding to the mass variation generated by the detector are averaged out. See the sensor is continuously sensing the mass variations and a corresponding signal is generated these signals are now integrated and an average is found out everything is being done, is being done electronically. Now, this average signal strength is compared with the preset reference value. So, we will compare the signal strength and we will see the extent of deviations and there is always a tolerance that we is given. So, if the deviation exceeds the tolerance, then the speed of the feed roller is changed by a controller. So, there has to be a controller which will be able to change the speed of the feed roller when the signal is sent to the controller. So, the deviation has to be more than the tolerance limit that you have already set. Depending upon whether deviation is positive or negative, the feed roller speed will be either decreased or it will be increased. The sensor, if we repeat it again, is a pneumatic sensor consists of a trumpet having laterally located air escape channels. 
and position just before the calendar roller. You can see the diagram that the trumpet is there and there is entry of the fibers to the trumpet. Now, as the sliver enters the trumpet, it carries air along with it. As the fibers get squeezed while passing through the trumpet, the accompanying air tries to escape and create back pressure because there are spaces between the fibers and in those spaces air is there and the fibers moving towards the trumpet, towards the exit end of the trumpet and therefore, when you are reaching there, there is a squeezing action and the air in between the fibers is trying to escape and that is how a back pressure is created. This pressure is transmitted through the channel to a pressure transducer. You can see that pressure transducer which is placed and this pressure transducer will be converting the pressure into an electrical signal. So, the device is very, very simple in construction and needs minimum maintenance since there are no moving parts. That is the advantage here that there is no moving parts in the sensor. However, the measurement may be influenced by fineness variation of fibers since the extent of squeezing and associated air changes with the fiber fineness. If the fiber fineness varies along the length, then what will happen? Whatever fibers are more, there are more spaces in between the fibers. Second thing is that the fibers, finer fibers are very, very flexible, their bending rigidity is less. Therefore, the extent of compression that the finer fibers will receive under similar conditions will be much more in comparison to the coarser fibers. And therefore, some variation could be there when fineness of the fiber varies from place to place. There could be mechanical sensor also. So, mechanical sensor also is there, but in this sensor there are two types, there are grooved rollers as shown in the diagram. The sliver is compressed between the two rollers and the up and down movement of the top roller is transformed into electrical signal. In this case, that is you see that the sliver cross section is shown here, the bottom roller is fixed in position, the top roller can move up and down and its up and down movement depending upon the thickness variation of the sliver will generate an equivalent electrical signal. And once we get electrical signal, then the process is same as we do with the signals generated by the pneumatic type of sensors. But here the sensors are rotating at a high speed depending upon whatever is the input speed of the sliver into the drawing system or in this case in the case of card, it is the, the exit speed of the sliver from the carding machine. Capability of the sensor. The response characteristics of the sensor makes it suitable for controlling variations longer than 20 meter or so and tries to maintain the mean value of the sliver count constant. So, these sensor that we have shown, their response characteristics is different from the other sensor which are used for controlling short term variations. These sensors are little slow in terms of response and as a result what happens that the length variations, the, the weight variation in length longer than 20 meter is what is can be controlled 
by these sensors. And hence, it will keep the mean saliva count constant. It is especially suitable for chewed feed curd, which is liable to more fluctuations due to differing fiber resolutions originating from different bales and volumetric control of fiber stock within the chute being too inaccurate. This point is very, very important that in the chute feed cards, we are trying to maintain the quantity of material in the chute fairly constant. However, the whatever the control system we have within the chute, they are not very, very efficient and therefore, volumetric control of fiber stock within the chute is not really very accurate. And as a result of this, the saliva that is going to be produced from the carding machine will also have weight variations along its length. So, in curds having chute feed system, this kind of auto laborer is suitable. Practically, then we can write or we can say that carded cotton spinning mill with at least two drop frame passages will be suitable. Why? Because the short term variation in the cyber length will be taken care of by the doubling actions of the drop frames, because we are giving two drop frame passages, breaker drop frame and finisher drop frame. Therefore, long term mass variation is taken care of by the auto levelers, but the short term variations which is present is taken care of by the draw frames in the case of carded yarn production. Generally for carded yarn production, we give two draw frame passages and hence the doubling may range between 36 to 64. If we feed six slivers on both the machines, breaker draw frame and finisher draw frame, we will have 36 doubling. Maximum what we can have? We can feed eight slivers in the breaker draw frame and another eight slivers in the finisher draw frame. So, that makes it 64. Therefore, the doubling on two draw frame can vary between 36 to 64. A 100 meter of yarn corresponds to short term mass variation range in the Baker drop frame sliver. The count CV of yarn would improve mainly due to doubling actions therefore. So, if we try to find out that what is the equivalent length of sliver that makes a yarn of 100 meter length. Why I am choosing 100 meter length? Because the count CV of yarn is based on around 100 meter, not exactly 100 meter, but close to 100 meter. So, the mass variation of yarn close to a hank, which is actually 120 yard and it will be close to 108 meter or 100, therefore, we are writing 100 meter that corresponds to short term mass variation present in the sliver and that short term mass variation is taken care of by the doubling actions on draw frame. The improvement at the most would be what is expected from the statistical law of doubling. This is always to remember that if the draw frame is going to generate breaker draw frame let us say is going to generate some amount of drafting wave or if there is a short term mass variation present in the card sliver, then it will get even out because of doubling actions, but the extent of suppression is dictated by the statistical law of doubling. Beyond that, we will not be able to reduce. Suppression of variations over long length of the sliver, let us say 25 meters and onwards would mean improvement in the mean value of almost 
3 lakh 20 thousand meter of yarn assuming the total drop between curd and ring frame being 8 into weight into 10 into 20 that is 12,800. What it basically says that if we have a long term auto leveler on carding machine and it will be it will be evening out the mass variation present between 20 meter of slivers or beyond 20 meters. Let us say it is 25 meters variations which are present is being uh, being controlled by the auto leveler. So, 25 meter of sliver length is equivalent to 3 lakh 20 thousand meter of yarn. Therefore, mass variation over very long length of the yarn will be maintained. That is the advantage that we get. And yarn count variation within a batch can only be controlled that is between bobbins, but not within a bobbin, which holds around 5000 meter of yarn only. So, by this auto leveler, between bobbin count variation will be able to control. However, controlling count variations within a bobbin, which holds at the most 5000 meter of yarn, will not be able to control by the long term auto leveler that we use on carding machines. It will be able to control only very, very long length, mass of very long length of yarn. So, between bobbin count variation will be controlled by the auto leveler, but uh, within bobbin count variation will not be able to manage with long term auto leveler. From long term auto leveler, we move on to medium term auto levelers. So, medium term auto levelers, the working principle is closed loop control system also. And if we look at the diagram given on the right hand side, we will find that there are two detection point. One, like the previous one, that is the trumpet placed just behind the calendar roller and the other sensor is placed on the cylinder surface as shown here. Here is a sensor and here is a sensor, there are two sensors. One like the previous one and the new one is placed on the cylinder surface and the control point is the feed roller. That is the roller that is feeding the lap or the mat of fibers to the carding machine. The second sensor is an optical photosensing device. The first sensor is a pneumatic pressure sensing device as shown earlier, but the new one is the optical photosensing device. So, these are the two sensors which are there how the system is working. The optical device being close to the regulating point, the control can be affected very faster than the pneumatic pressure sensing trumpet used for long term auto leveler. That is the difference that in this case, because the second controller that is the optical device is has been placed relatively close to the feed roller where we have the control and because of this faster controlling action can be taken. The signal generated by the optical sensor is averaged over a period of time and compared with the desired set value as we do in the other cases also. The different signal is used to change the speed of the feed roller proportionately, so that the layer thickness of fibers on the cylinder remains constant. The idea in this case is that if there is a feed variation, the thickness of fiber layer on the cylinder will also change accordingly. So, in the, if the in feeding more fibers, 
the thickness of the fiber layer on the same layer also going to be more. If I am feeding less fiber, then the thickness of fiber on the cylinder is also going to be less. So, by sensing the thickness using optical means of the layer of fibers on the cylinder, we will be able to get an information about the kind of feed which is coming to the carding machine. The other type of sensor which also could be used or are in use is sensor at the feed point itself. Here a series of measuring plates in the form of pedals as shown in the diagram. Look at the diagram that the pedal is here. Series of measuring plates in the form of pedals are placed across the feed table. The thickness of the lap or a mat of fibers fed to the liquidin is sensed at the feed table. So, on the feed table itself, there is a series of pedals and each pedal is basically a sensor. So, across the entire width of the feed plate, we place the pedals that could be 16 pedals, 18 pedals or 12 pedals could be there. So, each pedal is sensing the thickness of the mat which is being fed to the machine. As the thickness varies, the end of the measuring plate is connected to the displacement detectors. So, once, once the thickness varies, the end of the lever will also move up and down. These pedal plates which are there, that end as shown here, this end the 0.6 will move up and down. So, depending upon thickness variation, it will go up and down. The signals corresponding to the mass variation generated by these detectors are then fed to a controller. And that movement of the lever end is sensed by the sensor 3 shown here in the diagram. And then we get a large number of signals from the pedals and these signals are integrated, the average is found out and the average is, is basically again compared with the preset reference value. And then we after comparison the decision is taken whether the deviation is really very large that is going beyond the tolerance or not and accordingly the speed of the feed roller is changed. So, capability and suitability. The medium term auto leveler can even out variations from wavelength range of 3 meter onwards, which falls within the medium term wavelength range. So, medium term wavelength range is starting from 2.5 to 25 meter and this particular auto leveler can control variation from 3 meter onwards. Now, the question that comes that in where this kind of auto leveler should be suitable? This is more suitable for process having one drop hem passage and inconsistent feed by chute feed system. Now, if you have a process where you, where you use only one drop hem, then this system could be suitable, like let us say rotor spinning unit. Generally, we give one drop hem passage when you produce coarse count rotor spun yarn. In that kind of situation, this medium term auto leveler can be of some use or when the long term auto leveler fails to perform due to presence of strong medium term variations because long term auto leveler will start working from 20 meter onwards. So, variations in length equivalent to less than 20 meters, there is mass variation is there. Then 
the uh, long term at level error will not be able to really manage those variations and in such situations the medium term at level error will be helpful. So, when long term at level error fails to perform due to presence of strong medium term variations the medium term at level error improves the situation. Now, we come to short term auto levelers. So, see if we can control the short term mass variation that is between 0.25 to 2.5 meters, then this would obviate the need of drawing and doubling operations on draw frame altogether. So if I can start controlling 0.25 or 1 meter onwards the mass variation in the sliver n times spectra of mass variation, then we may not need the drawing and doubling actions at all. We have already produced a sliver which is very very uniform provided one important point which is here that provided parallelization and straightness of fibers are not so much important for yarn quality which is generally not true. That is usually we have seen it is not the mass variation which is only important for us from the quality point of view of the yarn or efficiency of the downstream machines. The parallelization and straightness of the fibers are also important and auto level art cannot help us in improving the parallelizations or straightness of fibers. This is only possible by drafting actions or drawing actions on draw frame. Otherwise, with short term auto levelers, we could have directly gone to the spinning unit for production of yarn. Now, these auto levelers, short term auto levelers, the working principle is mixed loop control system. That is, we have both open loop systems and we also have closed loop systems working together. The question comes ki why do you need this kind of mixed loop control systems? Closed loop systems are not suitable for controlling short term variations due to inherent dead time, but works fine with long term variations. So, the advantage of closed loop is that it can control long term mass variation because the response time is much more than short term uh, controllers. And therefore, the advantage with closed door system is that it can control long term mass variations, but cannot control short term mass variations. Whereas, open loop systems suitable for controlling extremely short wavelength mass variations, but not for keeping the average count of the sliver at the desired level, here it fails. So, long term mass variations will not be able to control with the open loop control systems and therefore, what we need a combination of these two and integrated systems working on both open and closed loop principles. So, the short term auto levelers will be always working with mixed loop uh, control uh, principles where both open and closed loop principles are used simultaneously. And short term auto leveler will be able to control the mass variation starting from very short length to very, very long length. Now, a, a diagram is shown here for the auto leveler the detection point is the trumpet in the calendaring unit and the trumpet as discussed earlier is just placed 
behind the current turning unit. Well, the control points are drawbox in front of the trumpet or candle rollers and also we control the speed of the feed roller which is behind the detection point. So, detection point is there as shown in the diagram, but the control points are in front of it and also behind it. So, the trumpet is a basically pneumatic sensors which senses the sliver mass as discussed earlier and it will generate the electrical signals. These signals are processed and they are after used by microcomputer to vary what? To vary the draft in the draw box placed in front of it. So, here it is working on the principle of open loop. It is sensing behind and controlling the speed of the rollers in the draw box which is placed in front of it. Therefore, whatever control action it takes, there is no recheck on it. In the draw box, the drop range is in the lies in the range of 1.2 generally. So, whenever we sense a mass variations, we have to either increase the draft in the draw box or decrease the draft in the draw box. And whenever the draft has to be increased or decreased, this question immediately comes to our mind that how do I change the draft? Should I change the speed of the front pair of rollers or should I change the speed of back pair of rollers? This question will always come and we have to decide which one we should choose. Here the draft is varied by varying the speed of output roller of the draw box. The speed of the draw box is going to vary within a very short range and this would necessitate corresponding speed variations in the coiler. So, as to lay the sliver appropriately in the can. See the delivery roller speed is changed in this case. In the delivery speed roller speed is changed then I am sometimes delivering more, sometimes delivering less. So, therefore, the coil at speed also needs to be changed accordingly. Now, speed changing of the coil at is generally not practiced. So, what we do as is because this is not really very feasible. Instead, what we do the excess sliver is stored in a storage box for the compensation. So, that is storage box in front of the draw box and any excess sliver length is stored there and from there it is being pulled at a constant rate by the coiling mechanism of the can. This is how it is done. Now, what we do also that in order to maintain the average sliver count at the desired level, the input to the card is also regulated. So, we also regulate the speed of the feed roller. So, that through this we will be able to control the long term mass variation in the sliver that we are going to produce. So, the signals from the same sensor after suitable processing are used to regulate the input that is the feed roller speed of the card. So, that the average input to the card remains constant. So, the sensors are used to vary the speed of the output roller or the delivery roller of the drawing box at the same time is also used to change the speed of the feed roller. And by doing so, we will be able to basically control the mass variation starting from very short length to very long length entire spectrum of mass variation in sliver can be controlled using the short term auto leveler. The short term auto leveler is just is not meant for only short term mass variations. Here we sometimes 
miss uh, understand from the name itself that short term auto level head is not only for controlling short term mass variations, it also controls the long term and medium term mass variations. Whereas, long term auto level head will only control long term mass variations, but not the medium term mass variations or not the short term mass variations. So, now suitability of short term auto leveler. So, the system is capable of eliminating short as well as medium and long term mass variations. As I just mentioned, the level sliver does not need any further doubling because we have already made it very regular. So, it does not need any doubling and drawing for improving short term variations, but it still needs doubling and drawing because we want to improve the parallelization of fibers in the sliver. We want to get rid of hooks in the fiber. So, because of this drawing will be required, but in case if there is a spinning system where too much parallelization in the sliver is not required, then instead of two draw frame passage, we can opt for single draw frame passage. Or if there is a system where the parallelization orientation of fibers in the sliver really does not matter, then also directly we can feed the sliver from the carting machine to the spinning machine like spinning of coarse yarn on rotor spinning machine. The high efficiency of this short auto leveler does not get manifested for normal carded and combed yarn. Since short term leveling is provided anyway by the doublings on draw frames. So, this also we have to remember that the improvement that we get in the short term and medium term length in this case that we can get to some extent by the doubling actions on draw frames because we use generally two draw frame passages. So, the doubling actions on the draw frames can take care of short term and medium term mass variations. Therefore, one can think that we can have a long term auto level in carding machine and the medium term and short term variations will be controlled or will be left for controlling by the doubling actions on breaker and finisher draw frame. There is a concept of correction length and we must know what it is. This is in the context of the auto leveling. So, you should know what is correction length and what is the implication of correction length. Now, here I have drawn a diagram on the left hand side and look at this diagram carefully. There is a blue line and there is an orange line. If we look at this diagram, first and you see the orange line shows that there is a sudden drop in mass per unit length suppose of the feed material. Suppose I am feeding a lap to the carding machine and there is a sudden drop and the drop is to the order of 10 percent. 10 percent sudden reduction in the mass of the material that is being fed to the carding machine and this reduction is marks is then continuing with time. Now, if we see the corresponding response of the machine, that means the sliver that I am producing from the machine, then we will see a difference like this. Suppose the machine is having some auto labeling unit also, we will what we will see that whatever there is sudden drop in 10 percent mass the output also will fall by 10 percent immediately there because 
and then it will continue with that reduction for some time and gradually the mass in the output is going to increase and it will come back to the original mass per unit length. So, from this vertical dotted line this time onwards if we see even though the material being fed to the machine is thinner by 10 percent the slide bar being produced from this time onwards is of normal thickness there is no change in it. So, over a length L as shown here there is a change in mass per unit length in the slide bar. So, as soon as the input mass decreases the output mass also decreases immediately, but the gradually it comes back to the original mass or unit length. So, the length over which the mass of the slide bar still remain defective in the final in the output is known as the correction length. So, the partially corrected portion is actually known as correction length. So, correction length is shown in the diagram because this part of the output slide bar is not exactly similar to the normal part of the slide bar. So, ideally there should not have been any reduction in the mass per unit length of the output slide bar that is we should have got the slide bar like this. But this is something with the auto leveler and the system that we have cannot achieve. It will slowly respond and try to bring back the mass per unit length to the normal one. So, little part of the slide bar will still remain defective or uh, this is the partially corrected portion is known as the correction length and the time the system takes to bring back the faulty slide bar to the desired set value is known as the correction time. So, that is the concept of correction length. So, ideally the correction length should be 0 that is what is ideal, but practically it is never 0. It all depends upon the efficiency of the auto labeling system that we have developed. The better the auto leveler is the smaller will be going to be the correction length. So, correction length L is going to be V into T where T is the time to level a certain percentage of increase in mass variations or maybe decrease in mass variation whatever it could be. So, T is the correction time and V is the velocity in centimeters per second of the material flow for the machine and therefore, correction length becomes V into T centimeter where T is in second and V is in centimeters per second. So, L equal is equal to V into T. So, that is the concept of correction length. So, in the industrial or uh, when you discuss about the auto levelers, this this, this question comes to the you know comes in your mind that the correction length, what is the correction length, and we should understand what exactly correction length means or what is correction time. And correction length depends upon what factors that we are going to now take it up. It depends upon the distance between sensing and regulating point, distance between the sensing and the regulating point. So, where is the sensor placed to detect a shift in variation in sliver mass and where is the regulation point. So, this physical distance between these two is important in deciding the correction length. Inertia of the regulating system. So, the regulating system is has its own inertia. 
and what is that inertia that also matters so it is depends upon the design of the entire system so electrical signals can flow very fast but when it comes to finally changing the speed of a uh, of a roller it could be fluid roller they are heavy mass they are turning at a certain speed and if we want to change the speed either decrease or increase whatever it is a quick change may not be possible the change will take place in a certain time but if we want to change too fast then too much of vibration may set up or too much of power may be required immediately too much of torque has to be generated and there are difficulties in the mechanical design of the actuators therefore the design comes into play that is ultimately it is the inertia of the regulating system that matters the other thing that matters is the delivery speed at what speed i am delivering the material what is the production speed of the carding machine in terms of meters per minute not kg per minute what is the delivery rate is it 100 meters per minute or it is 200 meters per minute what is the rate at which i am delivering the material that also matters because you have seen l is equal to v into t or v is the delivery speed it also depends upon the draft that is what is the draft in the in the machine because by drafting also the correction length is going to be extended or going to be increased by the draft so draft also will matter and extent of mass variations of the slide bar from a set value how much mass has changed mass per unit length has changed from the nominal value is it has the change is by 10% or 15% or 20% or 25% that will also matter the bigger the change more time will be required to bring the output back to the nominal value again and therefore the correction length is going to increase so extent of mass variation therefore is important and sense of change of mass also matters that is whether it is from normal level to lighter side that change in input is from normal to become lesser on the lighter side or from lighter level to the normal the other possibilities could be normal level to heavier side that is it is feeding at a certain rate which is normal and it has increased the feed has increased by 10% or 20% because there is more mass which is flowing now the input material has increased in terms of thickness or weight per unit length so it become from normal to becomes heavy so correspondingly we will have a correction length and suppose it is feeding heavy for quite some time over 10 minutes or 5 minutes and then it has suddenly it has again come coming back to the normal so from heavier side to normal in all these cases the correction length is going to be different from each other so these are the various factors on which correction length depends out of this factors what is is what is in our control is basically the delivery speed distance between the sensing and regulating point we cannot change because that already has been designed and there's no we cannot change it inertia of the regulating system also cannot be changed once the system has been designed delivery speed is something that we can change and by changing delivery speed we can also influence the correction length the draft yes theoretically also we can change the draft 
but drop depends on other factors like delivery speed also depends on productivity of the machine. So, not much scope is there with the these two important parameters called drop and delivery speed, but still it is possible because they are basically the processing parameters. And the extent of mass variation of the sliver from the set value or the mass variation in the case of uh, your carding machine it could be mass variation in the feed material from the set value, not the sliver. Sliver would be the case when we are discussing auto leveler for draw frames, but when it is carding machine it will be mass variation in the feed material from the set value from the reference value. Now, this is not also in our control because whatever is being fed through the chute feed system or by feeding by a lab there the mass variations which is the present in the lab or in the mat of fibers being fed through chute feed system is something is beyond the control or we will not know in advance. The other thing also we will not be able to know that whether the change is from normal to lighter, lighter to normal or normal to heavy and heavy to normal. This is something not possible for us to change, but the delivery speed and draft these two to some extent can be changed to manage the correction length. Here it gives an idea about the uh, delivery speed versus correction length for four different situations mode of change of cyber mass. One is the orange one shows from 0 percent to minus 25 percent that is let us say that means nominal to the finer side. The next blue one shows finer side to nominal. The green is from normal to heavier side change and the black line is indicating the change from heavy to normal. So, four different situations what is going to be the correction length that is depicted in this particular uh, graph and this has been done for difference delivery speed. So, as what we can see we have already shown you that correction length L is V into T. So, if I here also you see as we increase delivery speed V, L is going to increase linearly for all the cases. That means, the correction length is increasing as delivery speeds are changed from 200 to 400, 500 meters per minute in this case. This is due to increase in correction time and more delivery at a given response time. So, this is how the changes are there and uh, so by reducing delivery speed the correction length can be reduced. This experiment was done in the context of, uh, of you know, uh, uh, the change in correction length with delivery speed for draw frames because such kind of speeds are there for draw frames. So, this is the uh, interesting point about the correction length and correction time reduction in correction length. So, a long correction length is not good that we have understood the smaller it is or the shorter it is the better it is. The correction length has been brought down to 3 centimeter depending upon the operating speed by the modern auto levelers. So, correction length has been brought down to 3 centimeter in the modern auto leveler that have been designed. So, that is a great improvement that means, the faulty sliver that you will see will be of just 3 centimeter in length and that 3 centimeter faulty sliver 
will produce the yarn that has to be multiplied by whatever draft you use to convert a saliva to yarn. So, that much length of the yarn will be little you know, thicker or little thinner it could be, but this has been brought down to almost this centimeter and even less maybe in some auto levelers. For system design on closed loop principle, the correction length lies between 5 to 10 meter of saliva length when correction is initiated in the main drop zone. 10 to 20 meter saliva length when correction is initiated in the break drop zone. In the case of draw frame, this is true that the correction length, the closed loop control system is always much larger in comparison to open loop systems and uh, this is 5 to 10 meters saliva length when I do the correction in the main drop zone. If I do the correction in the break drop zone, then it gets extended by the drop in the front zone. So, it will be little more than what we get when the correction takes place in the break drop zone. So, this is 10 to 20 meter, otherwise it is 5 to 10 meter. Okay. Now, factors affecting auto leveling performance. What are the factors that affect the performance? That also we should know. One is the moisture content variation in part of the batch may lead to differential response, especially with capacitating type sensor used in auto levelers. That means, if the moisture content varies, now there are some fibers we all know that cotton, viscose, these fibers absorb moistures. So, the moisture content varies, the response also of the, of the sensor may also change. If it is on capacitance based sensors and therefore, a differential response by which we might get and it can affect the auto leveling performance. But if it is if the sensor are not based on not capacitance type in that case it will not really matter. Brain level variation in pre carded brain in material may also lead to variation in response of sensors leading to introductions of weight variations by auto leveler itself. So, brain level variation uh, in the pre carded brain in material can also affect the response of the sensors. This is also important that if there is too much of variation that is in the two components of the blend, if it is polyester and cotton, some places I have more polyester and some places I have less polyester in the saliva. In that case, the sensors will respond differently and as a result the performance of the auto leveler will be affected. Other thing is drop differences between auto leveler draw frames. That is if the drop differences are there between auto leveler draw frames running on the same mixing, this can also affect the auto leveler performance. So, that is also you have to be very careful that if we have a set of draw frames having auto levelers and the drop in all those drop frames should be exactly same that we should maintain. And the variation of fiber density or fiber fineness may also lead to different response by the sensors. Hence, attaining mixing homogeneity in the blow room is also important. So, variation in fiber density like suppose you take two fibers of two different densities, especially let us say polyester and cotton. So, densities are different, polyester density is much less than cotton or you take some other combinations where density differences are there or there is variation in fineness of the fibers. Within cotton also sometimes we mix cottons of different varieties where fineness could be different from each other and if the final blend that we produce or the mixing that we produce if it is not homogeneous, then 
the responses that we get over a period of time from the levelers can also change. Somewhat suppose I have coarser fibers in a sliver, somewhat I have finer fibers in a sliver and we have mechanical sensors. Then where the finer fibers are there, they will get compressed easily. The movement of the sensor, sensing rollers may be less and where they have coarser fibers coming, the movement of the sensing rollers may be more and therefore, even though the mass may be same, still the responses that will be generated when this mass predominantly having fine fibers and a mass of the sliver predominantly having coarser fibers, they will give different type of you know, response to the compressed rollers. The rollers will move differently as a result and the signal that you generated by the rollers will be different and therefore, it will affect the performance of the auto levelers. So, these are the uh, main points which can affect the performance of the auto levelers and therefore, mixing homogeneity is very, very important. Moisture content of the material is also important and dropped differences between the drop frame rollers, drop frames are also important. With this, we close today's discussions and thank you.